This video is about an attempt to cut wooden gears and other parts for making wooden clocks without the use of CNC or other expensive machinery but in a better way than has been done because I found when I tried to make this lovely clock as designed by Clayton Boyer that the cutting of the gears is quite tedious but it also needs to be fairly accurate although not precise accuracy is important because uh, to run properly the clock needs to have accurate gears and also to look good so I already had this router pantograph as uh, designed by Matthias Wandel and I thought well I could probably make a poor man's uh, CNC router out of this so I rigged it up in conjunction with a rotary table that I had and the rotary table gives the accurate rotation for cutting the gears and the router does the rest so between the two I was hoping that uh, I'd get a result the pan router has a 2 to 1 ratio on its setting as it is there this means that a double sized plan or template is used to produce the finished gear and that's how it works the top of the rotary table I fitted with a, a MDF wheel and used simple indexing holes around the perimeter of it around the circumference uh, to make quick simple indexing the rotary table itself can be used with a more complex uh, indexing this hole on the setup table is there to give a center point for the template which will correspond when the cutter is over the center of the rotary table. So when the stylus is on the hole, the cutter is over the center of the rotary table. That's important for using the templates. So mine starts off with the four times drawing drawing four times the size of the gear to be cut and that is used to produce a template which is double the size of the gear to be cut. Now it doesn't have to be a complete gear, just a segment of the gear uh, used as a template will be enough used over several times to produce the finished gear. The stylus has a 10mm end and a 5mm end. The 10mm end is used for the drawings to make templates and the 5mm end is used with a template to cut the actual gear. When using the 10mm stylus we use a 5mm bit and for the 5mm stylus it's half size we use a 2.5mm cutter. Uh, I tried various cutters, the spiral fluted ones are the best milling covers, even carbide ones, burn out. So a piece of cardboard on top of the uh, wooden rotary table top saves damage to that, prolongs its life. I had to make my own dividing plate for this particular job because this uh, rotary table didn't suit a 32 um, division that I needed. This just shows the the quick indexing around the edge. The mechanism of the table can be disconnected and the rotary table turned quickly for simple indexing. Such and but for more complicated indexing then the the handle can be used as it normally would to divide up. So using the four times plan, uh, a two times double sized um, part template is is produced. In the case of the numbers I just used the double sized numbers to directly produce the uh, numbers because there's only one lot of them I didn't bother with templates. So start with a blank for the gear, drill a hole for the to center it on the rotary table and then using a 5mm pen the template is centered on the copying table where the stylus is going to go. That's positioned and clamped down. 
So with the uh, blank then positioned in the middle of the rotary table and a 2.5 millimeter cutter installed, we're able to cut the blank. To secure the blank to the rotary table, uh, I just used pins nailed into the MDF top because clamps on there made it very hard to rotate the table and it just didn't work. So with the fact that it's held in the center, a tack or two does the job. Then just a matter of following the template, cut out the cutouts on the wheel. This wheel, this gear has three circular cutouts and in between those three circular cutouts are three triangular cutouts. So there are six cutouts all together. So this is starting off cutting the first circular cutout and it's just a matter of following the template. The router cuts quite quickly, quite smoothly. It makes quite a lot of noise but not much dust so not too bad. I can produce a 20, uh, sorry, 60 or a 64 toothed um, wheel in about 20 minutes and that includes the six cutouts. So there's the first uh, circular cutout taken out. The rotary table will then be rotated 120 degrees and the next circular cutout produced and then the same again. That will give the three circle cutouts before the rotary table is advanced 60 degrees this time for the first triangular cutout between two of the circles. It's only then needed to a further two advancements of 120 degrees to cut out the rest of the triangular cutouts and after that the, the teeth can be cut and the wheel will be finished. I'm cutting out uh, six millimeter thick plywood here, birch plywood. Six millimeters is about the limit in depth and that happens to be what most of the clock gears are made of. Some of the pinions are uh, thicker so it's just a case of making two of them glue them together. Here we're turning the template around to now uh, cut out the triangular type cutout. So the template's positioned again centered in the correct position. Clamp down and uh, we simply follow that. There's the triangular cutout and then we're also in place now to cut the outer teeth without moving the template again. The teeth can be cut probably four or five or even six at a time. Um, speeds the job up and you still get a good result. That's for these bigger gears. For small pinions I found it best just to cut one tooth at a time. So I only need a template with one tooth on basically and uh, I found that was the best way to go with the pinions. So this is simply cutting out one of the triangular cutouts. As I said the router does move quite smoothly and at a decent speed and the cut is generally good. The great thing about this is that there's very little filing at the end of it all. So we, we progress to cut out all the cutouts and uh, we can then work on the teeth. This is the uh, the wheel with the jagged teeth on, uh, not the involute teeth of most of the gears. So um, the only thing with the, with this router is it doesn't cut the gullets very square. It obviously leaves a rounded uh, bottom on, on the teeth profile. So in the case of, of this wheel, um, it may be necessary to file a little bit in the gullets just to get a sharp bottom. So this shows the wheel coming off the cutter in very good shape. 
very little cleanup required virtually no filing at all required an excellent result that could actually be put on a clock and would work straight away here we have um, one of the smaller wheels this only has single cutouts but there's five of them um, that then produces a, a kind of a spoke wheel effect and in this case we use the rotary table handle with the indexing plate to advance to the next required place to cut out that cutout and again it's just a matter of following, of following the, the profile um, again here we can do the teeth at the same time because they're on the same um, part of the template this particular cut didn't quite go deep enough in one section but it was very little material left it was like tissue paper thin it just peeled off and again after minimum cleanup no firing required of the teeth and uh, that would work straight off on a clock here we have one segment to cut out on this wheel so the tables being advanced to the next to that position that will be cut out and then the teeth produced this is the wheel uh, finally finished it gave quite a furry uh, finish on the outside of this wheel because I was using milling, a milling cutter uh, but although it looks a bit furry once that's given a light rub and got those fibers removed no filing required of the teeth and that wheel works perfectly it's symmetrical and round this is the template the single tooth template for producing the pinion as I said I found it best to do these singly and when making the template it's actually best to round the tooth off although it's an involute tooth or it should be involute tooth with these small wooden pinions it's better to just round them off and head for I suppose you would describe it as like a teardrop tooth uh, in this case I think it was 11 and a quarter turns between teeth so it's just a case of go around one tooth advance 11 and a quarter turns on the rotary table and eventually we get to the end doesn't take long and we produce a nice little pinion if we want a thicker one we just make two of those glue them together and we get the thickness we want so after a minim minimum cleanup here's the two wheels put together on a test jig and they can be seen to run quite well I think in reality you could leave them just at 6 mil thick the pinions will still work okay on the back side of this jig um, once we've got them running nice the shaft centers will be set at the ideal setting there the other side of those nails have points on so by just putting those on the frame and tapping them there'll be marks made to show where the center should be drilled for the axles so no actual measuring required that jig will do it for you this shows the f almost finished product of the clock these gears have been cut no filing hardly at all and they work very well so I'm very happy with the result and the fact that I don't have to do a lot of filing hope this helps and good luck thank you